Okay, so I'm Dr. Charlie Rosier, lecturer in medieval history here at Swansea. Today I've got with me James Aitchison, who is a novelist who writes historical fiction, mostly around the Norman Conquest in England, which is the 11th and 12th centuries. James studied at Emmanuel College, Cambridge, and then published his first novel some years later in 2011, which is called Sworn Sword. Here you can see behind you, tactically placed. Um, James has since published four books, and his latest book is called The Harrowing, which came out in 2016. So I've got some questions I'm going to ask James, and we'll see if we can have a good conversation about how to write medieval fiction. So James, tell us about your new book, The Harrowing. Um, okay, the, my new book, The Harrowing, is set during a particular episode of the Norman Conquest, known as the Harrowing of the North, or the, the Harrowing of the North. Um, when William the Conqueror, um, shortly after he uh, came to power in England, went into Yorkshire and the north of England and laid waste the countryside in retribution for the rebellions against his rule. Um, and in so doing, he killed um, more than 100,000 people, we're told, um, which is a considerable number of people, especially at the time um, when England's population was probably only about 2 million. Um, so the novel focuses on five English refugees who are fleeing the devastation, um, a lady, a maidservant, a warrior, a poet and a priest, and each of them has a secret that they're doing their best to keep hidden from the others. But over the course of their travels, as the Normans close in and as the weather gets harsher, uh, gradually all of those secrets are revealed and, uh, and uh -huh. we find out what they're actually all running And you're not going to tell us what they are? Uh, those secrets, no, I'm not no, going to okay. tell the secrets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to read the book for that. Great. Okay, so how did you first get into writing historical fiction then, James? Well, I studied um, history at, at Cambridge, as you mentioned, and um, my focus was the Norman Conquest. My dissertation was on, on the career of Harold Godwinson, and it was actually while I was still doing my dissertation that I came up with uh, the idea for what turned out to be my first book, um, uh, a series set in the immediate aftermath of the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> so, um, so it was a, it was a kind of natural fit. I'd always been writing fiction from a very early age. Uh, I'd always harboured ambitions of being an author. Um, so to combine that love of writing with my love of history just seemed natural. Um, and from there, I went on. I did a master's in creative writing at Bath Spa University. Um, and that's where I developed uh, the, the concept and, and the manuscript for, um, for my first novel. And uh, from there, I haven't really looked back. No, you haven't. It's great. So do you do much research before you write your books? How much historical research would you say you do? Um, I, yes, I, well, obviously I have that background in, in history. So um, research is something that comes naturally to me. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy going back to uh, the primary sources. So I, um, I read a lot of the, the chronicles and, and other texts um, that uh, are relevant to the, to the era of late Anglo-Saxon and early Norman England. Um, I've now been researching the, the conquest era for about uh, 13 years oh, wow. now. <laughs> so, you know, I have a lot of information at my fingertips. So, um, so it means that I, I, if, I, if, if I have an idea, I can just... Uh, I can go ahead and get started on the writing without requiring too much specialist knowledge, but inevitably during the course of writing you find there are um, areas of, uh, uh, of, of expertise that you need, to, you need to become acquainted with. Mm. Um, so for my latest novel I had to, had to um, understand better what it was like to be each of my, um, my main five characters. I had to understand um, what it was to be a medieval priest in early and Congress. a maid and and a maid yeah. and a maid and a lady and and uh, a warrior and and a poet. So I absorbed a lot of okay. um, a lot of the primary sources, a lot of the Anglo-Saxon poetry from the from mm. the age, a lot of the the uh, the the martial poetry, um, things like Beowulf and um, texts like the the Battle of Malden mm. and, um, to give give me an insight into that military, lordly, um, aristocratic culture. Um, so, so research, it's an ongoing thing. Um, I never really stop. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I'm always finding new avenues to explore even after 13 years. Right, so are we all, hopefully. <laughs> That's the point of my work as well. Do you then feel a duty to be historically accurate when you're writing your novels? Do you feel like it's important to represent the past accurately? It's a good question. Um, the traditional answer I'd give to that is yes, as a, as a historian by training, I, I do feel I, I, I have a, a responsibility not to mislead the reader in an active way about what happened in the past. Uh, but as a writer, I'm, I find that my, my influences are not just limited to the sources of the time. They're not just limited to historical influences. They, you know, uh, all artists take their inspiration from the culture that they grow up in, in modern culture. So in that sense, yeah. we can never really be truly representative of the, of the period of history that we're, we're describing as historical novelists. So it's a, it's a difficult balance. Um, and in my latest novel, I adopt um, a very contemporary, very modernist style of writing, um, which is completely at odds with how writing would have been done, you know, of, of these kind of narratives in, back in the time. Um, but I think you can use that interaction of modern forms. And the novel is a modern form, after all. It's only been around for about mm. 300 years. Um, I think we can use that interaction of the modern and the medieval to say something new about the past. So what do you think modern audiences can learn about the past from reading historical fiction? I think what they can do is uh, they can empathise with people from the time. I think that's something which is much easier to do through the medium of fiction, which has yeah. this kind of virtual reality kind of feel about it. Mm. It puts you directly into the... Um, into the shoes, in, into the minds of um, of people from the past, and and I think it does encourage a kind of empathy. It allows us to to experience points of view which um, which we might not have considered before. And um, certainly, in my latest novel, I uh, you know I, I seek to um, to show what the plight of refugees would have been like in this period, which has a contemporary relevance yeah. as well. So uh, so I think we can. Um, we can almost we can close up the gap to some extent between the past and the present, mm. and begin to see how actually, um, you know, uh, it's not a political book that I'm I'm writing. I'm not writing <laughs> specifically about modern the modern crisis, but we can we can see echoes of yeah. um, of uh, modern refugees coming out of the yeah. Middle East in in our own society a thousand years ago, and see that actually we 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 were in that place once. We are not so different. Yeah. And I think the more one studies the past, the more one realises that human nature is permanent and yep. that events are cyclical. So that's an right. interesting way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that if a historian like myself were ever to be accused of giving too much emotion into my writing, then that's a weakness of my writing as a historian, but it's a strength of yours. So yes. it's an interesting balance. Yeah, I think um, history and fiction can complement each other quite well. And so... Having written The Harrowing, which came out in 2016, do you have any plans in place for another book? Do you have your next project in mind I, already? Yeah, I've already started on my next oh, wow. project. Um, it's taken me a little while to get around to it. I had to let The Harrowing settle for a while. Um, I, I, was, I was too harrowed out <laughs> <laughs> after writing it um, to, to embark on something new straight away. But uh, I have just starting, started writing a new project, which I'm sort of keeping under wraps. So you can't really tell us I about can't it. Tell too much, Is it but set it, in the same period? It's, it's set um, about 50 years earlier. Okay. Um, it's earlier? Sort of early in history. That's so we're, we're, we're going back to um, to England just before the the Danish conquest of 1016. Oh. Uh, and um, it will it will explore some more fantastical themes, almost science fiction-y okay. themes. Um, in a historical context. Mm. Um, it's based on a, a little known um, story that I, that I, I find it is, it's well known amongst, amongst historians. Uh, there's a little known story from um, the historian William of Malmesbury um, writing about a monk from his abbey who um, some time before he was there. I know what this is going to be about already. <laughs> who was uh, a pioneer of flight. Well, was he? <laughs> he tried <laughs> well, to be. He? he tried to be. Um, it didn't. It didn't end too well for him. 
Okay. But uh, but I'm, I've been fascinated by, by this, brilliant. this love to inventor more. character and yeah. what he was trying to do in this mm. um, in this uh, attempt. So to maybe a bit like flame. The Spire by William Golding. Have you read that? I wouldn't know because I haven't read that. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, it's about um, a crazy guy who's building a new cathedral and no one believes in anything that he's doing. Right. So it could be worth reading for inspiration. Yeah, I'm, I'll uh, take that recommendation. Okay, and the last question, um, James, what advice would you give to any student who's thinking about doing some creative writing, who's thinking about being a writer? I'd say just go and do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there are no entry requirements to being a writer. You just you go and you, you type away and the more you type, or write by hand, I have always typed, but um, uh, the more you do, the better you get. And, um, and that's, that's really the, the only advice I can give. It's, uh, it's very hard to, to, to give specific yeah. guidance. Um, when you're ready, I think, give your, um, sh be prepared to, to show your writing amongst a community of writers. Mm. Um, get, some, get some feedback, um, but only when you feel that your writing is, is ready to show. Yeah. Um, I think it is important to, to get that that feedback so you know that you're on the right track and mm. um, you have to you have to develop a thick skin as a writer <laughs> as well. Um, sometimes you have to be prepared prepare for some knockbacks to yeah. encourage you to to bring the best out of yourself. Yeah. I think academic historians have the same philosophy really. Mm. Develop a thick skin yeah. and share your work with others because there will always be criticisms in anything that you do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that goes for history writing and um, essays for coursework as well, <laughs> um, as well as any creative writing that you might want to do. Yeah. Okay, so that's the questions finished for James. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed learning more about James and his writing, what it takes to be a creative writer, and some of the directions that you might want to take your studies after you graduate in the more creative fields. You can find more about James's works on his website, which is www.jameshacherson.co.uk. Dot com. Dot com. com. Or you can follow James on Twitter, and you can follow me on Twitter if you want to know more about what else we're doing in the history department in the coming weeks. So thank you for watching. Hopefully see you soon.